Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential function. z to the power z equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. Now a complex number raised to itself, we're going to talk about complex exponentiation, a couple interesting things and this is going to get somewhat complicated at some point. So bear with me. I'll be presenting two approaches, all right? Let's start with the first one. So for my first approach, first of all, we need, we need to think about it. Like, do you think any solutions exist to this equation? So we've got to talk about the complex exponentiation, but that's going to be for the second approach. With the first approach, I just want to say, hey, suppose, and by the way, that's the name of this channel, right? Z equals A plus BI and at the same time equals r e to the i theta. As you know, hopefully, and if not, please check out the lecture videos. I did make a series. A complex number can be written in standard form or rectangular form as a plus bi, where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. As you can see, we can call them r e and i m without the i, of course. And also in polar form using the modulus r, or the absolute value of z and the argument theta. Argument is the angle that our number makes with the x-axis. So kind of like this, right? But in this case, we're talking about i, so it's going to be a different story, right? Well, of course, this is not i, this is our z. So what is complex exponentiation? Again, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but I want you to start thinking about it. And if you know the definition now, we have this equality, right? Obviously, they represent the same thing, but those are different forms. Now, we're going to use both because I have z to the z. And I want to use this for the base because this would probably be a little easier in the base. So z to the z, I want to write it as r e to the i theta to the power a plus b i. It's better to have something like a plus b i because you can separate the real parts and imaginary parts and kind of distribute so on and so forth. Let's see how this goes. I'm not going to write i uh, until I get to the very end. Now let's go ahead and do this. I want to first of all separate these two things like r to the power a plus b i times e to the i theta to the power a plus b i. Of course, uh, this is a real number, r is a real number, and a and b are real numbers, but when you raise r to the power a plus b i, then you can kind of separate the exponents, right? We can kind of write this as, and the same thing goes for e to the z. When you have something like e to the a plus b i, you can write it as e to the a times e to the b i, and this just happens to be the new r, or the modulus. Anyways, this becomes r to the i times r to the b i, so for this particular piece, the conjugate, I mean, not the conjugate, the modulus would be r to the power a, okay? Whatever a is. And then this part can actually be kind of distributed, or you can write it this way, a to the i theta to the a times e to the i theta to the power b i. This will probably be a little easier. So then we're going to get r to the a, r to the b i, e to the i a theta, and then here i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. So that's going to give you e to the power negative theta b or b theta, whatever you, you want to write. I think b theta is probably going to look a little better. Let's do that because we have an a theta here, right? Cool. Now the next thing to do is going to be putting the real parts together, which doesn't have any i in them. So these two will go together nicely and these two will go together. Make sense? And what we can do is we can actually go ahead and write this as r to the a e to the negative b theta as the you know real part or the modulus rather and then these two can be combined but here's the problem i have an r and i have an e so i can't just directly add their exponents so i have to eify the r which is the base so kind of change it to e and r to the bi on the side let's do it can be written as e to the ln r and then to the bi is just going to give you e to the power b ln r times i. Or you can write the i first, doesn't matter, no big deal. But now we're going to get the following. e to the power, e to the power, i b ln r 
plus i a theta. Now we were able to combine them, right? So here's what we have so far as our z to the z. Again, that looks pretty complicated, doesn't it? But we're going to try to simplify as much as possible. Now, we have these two things together first. That makes the modulus. And this part here can actually be written as e to the power i times b l n r plus a theta. Okay? So far, so good. I hope you're following. Now we're going to do the following. We're going to go ahead and compare this to i, right? But what is i? i is e to the power i theta. Remember that? Or i pi over 2. In this case, the theta for i would be pi over 2. And why is that? Let's talk about it. This is actually i on the argon plane or the complex plane is represented by 0 plus i. So it's going to be right here. Its distance from 0 is going to be 1. And the angle or the argument is going to be pi over 2. Of course, we talked about this, right? You can just add multiples of 2 pi to it. So in the most basic form, I'm going to write it as e to the power i times pi over 2. But one can always write this plus 2 pi n as multiples of 2 pi. But I want to keep things a little simpler because they are already way too complicated. So I want to just write it in principle form or principal value. Okay, so far so good. Now notice that the modulus on the right hand side is 1 because it's i, right? But there is a modulus here on the left hand side which is supposed to be 1. So this is supposed to be 1 and this is supposed to be pi over 2 because in order for these numbers to be equal, that needs to happen. Of course, there are more complications that we're not getting into. I want to simplify this a little bit so that it doesn't look too overwhelming. Now, what does this entail? This means we get two equations from here. R to the A times E to the negative B theta is 1. And then B L N R plus A theta is pi over 2. So that kind of gives us a system, but look. We have so many variables, right? How are we going to solve the system? But well, wait a minute. A, B, R, and theta are related. How? Here's how we can do it. A plus B, I, if Z is equal to A plus B, I, R is the absolute value of Z, which is the square root of A squared plus B squared. And we know that tangent theta is B over A, so we can kind of replace theta with 10 inverse of B over A. Of course, this is not always possible, just depends on the quadrant. Well, let's just assume for simplicity's sake that we're in the first quadrant and everything works nicely, okay? All right, now, we got everything we need. Now, let's go ahead and replace R with this and theta with that. Ready? So, I can go ahead and throw this on the right-hand side and write this as R to the A equals E to the B theta. And from here, R is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared raised to the power A equals e to the power b times 10 inverse b over a. Again, depending on the quadrant, you're going to have to uh, add some angles if that's the case. But in this case, we're assuming first quadrant. Okay? So this gave us one equation. Doesn't look very good, but anyways. Now, the second equation is going to be like b times ln r, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and then plus i theta. And I want to go ahead and put that a theta on the right hand side. So write it as pi over 2 minus a theta and theta will be replaced with 10 inverse of b over a. I'm going to do a little bit of something. I'm going to ln both sides here so that I can bring down some powers. And when I do, I'm going to get a ln square root of a squared plus b squared equals b times 10 inverse b over a. I did ln both sides here and here. But ln e is 1, so it disappeared. Make sense? So we got a nicer equation, and here's what we have so far. You like it? Okay, this is complicated, isn't it? But here's how you can proceed. You can go ahead and divide these equations like this. You're going to get b over a from here, and then pi over 2 minus a 10 inverse b over a over b 10 inverse b over a. And then you can kind of multiply b by b and get a b squared here. And then kind of solve for 10 inverse b over a. Is that going to get you anywhere? You can go ahead and test it out. Again, this is an approach. It's not going to be complete. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach, which will actually be at the second method. So z to the z equals i. 
And now we're going to write this as e to the power z ln z because that's the definition of complex exponentiation. Again, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and write the principal value for i e to the i pi over 2. So far, so good. Now, look at the exponents. Set them equal to each other. And then from here, you're going to get z ln z equals i times pi over 2. Awesome. Now, we're going to use a special function. You guessed it if you said Wolfram's, wait a minute, not Wolfram's, Lambert's, yeah, it has w in it, but it's Lambert's w function. So let's go ahead and write the z as e to the power ln z, and let's just w both sides. When you put the w on something like t e to the t, remember by definition, it gives you the t. It's the inverse function for t to the t, right? So from here, we're supposed to get the t, which is ln z, equals w i pi over 2. And then, of course, when you do e to the power both sides here, you're going to get z equals e to the power w i pi over 2. And guess what? That's the answer. Isn't that quick and super nice? But what is it? Let's take a look at some values, right? Of course. So... Here's what Wolfram Alpha is supposed to offer, 1.3606 plus 1 point something something i, that's our z, right? And let's go ahead and find out what happens if we exponentiate that with itself. Yes, we do get something like this, obviously these are approximations, but you can kind of read it as 0 plus 1i, and that's actually going to be i. Of course, there are many more digits, infinitely many, and when you in directly input it to Wolfram Alpha, this is something that you're getting. And if you forget about this multiple of 2 pi, you get pretty much the same thing that I got, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.